Hey guys, this is Tyler Sombra with Tread Athletics, and today we're going to talk about four seam fastballs and looking at corresponding inflection points with this pitch. So, four seam fastballs, uh, something everybody's going to be familiar with. Uh, we're really trying to see where we can create a unique profile with that pitch. Um, as we touched on before in a description, looking at inflection points, we're looking at two very important variables, which is WOBA and whiff rate. Uh, and you can see here as we stabilize on that average line of zero, we wanna see this blue line of WOBA get below average and we wanna see this red line of whiff rate get above average. So we're gonna move through each category here, kinda go piece by piece to see where uh, a four seam fastball projects better. So first looking at velocity, uh, I think this one's pretty straightforward, right? So less reaction time for the hitter, the better. This is pretty much across every pitch, but looking at four seams specifically at the major league level, you can see once you clip around 94 miles an hour, you're getting a pretty solid return here. So you can see WOBA go below average and you can see whiff rate climb above. Uh, you actually see at 100 miles an hour, the whiff rate starts to go down a little bit. Not drastic, but this also is likely somebody who throws a high majority share of fastballs. Looking at vertical break, so carry is something super prevalent in the game today, as we've touched on before in prior videos. And you can really see a lot of that, those data points come to light here. So once somebody is getting above 16 inches of vertical break on their fastball, whiff rate is above average and WOBA really starts to fall. And that's kind of why we've seen carry be so popular in the game. Uh, we know it leads to more whiffs, which for a fastball in general is abnormal to generate whiffs. That's why we utilize a little more off speed. But in order to get that with your four seam fastball, usually having vertical break is going to be necessary. Looking at horizontal break, you can see this is really just kind of a break even point. So all across the board here with both WOBA and whiff rate, we're kind of just stabilizing right on the zero line. So it's really not a huge point of emphasis for us uh, because we're not gonna get a huge return. We're always looking at these things in terms of giving some to get some, and we're not really willing to sacrifice any attribute of a guy's pitch characteristics for horizontal break because again, looking at the data here, there really is no immediate benefit with the horizontal movement. Vertical approach angle. So this one I think is, is something we're seeing more and more I know our data analyst Cam has been working on a pitch plus model that takes into account uh, plate location in terms of where the pitch is thrown in the zone and vertical approach angle being a huge dependent upon where the pitch is thrown. Uh, you can see here, the flatter that vertical approach angle is, uh, whiff rates go through the roof, right? And that makes sense, throwing four seam fastballs up can be very beneficial. But I think this also highlights the point of even if you don't have extreme vertical break, if you're throwing the four seam fastball in really good spots, you still have a high probability of success. Um, again, you can see the WOBA get below the average line there. And then of course you see this huge spike in whiff rate as well. So overall with four seam fastballs, these are the categories that we're going through to see what trade-offs are necessary. Again, where can I give some to get some? Uh, what is my best immediate return? What can I work on? Uh, and that is how these things play out with four seam fastballs. And that's all I've got for four seam fastballs. If you guys have any questions or comments, drop them below. But thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.